this lecture is about the dynamics equation of the two ohm manipulators. In the previous lecture, we have seen uh, how to write the dynamic equation of one ohm manipulator and the two ohm manipulator with the pointed mass. So, in this uh, example, we see a 2 degree of freedom manipulator with uh, uniformly distributed mass. So, the density is uh, constant throughout the manipulator. So, uh, as we recall, we have to first construct the Lagrangian that is the kinetic energy minus potential energy and then the equation can be formulated that is uh, d by dt of del L by del Q dot minus del L by del Q equal to torque is the general uh, dynamic equation of any number of uh, uh, ohms. So, now uh, we consider this robot manipulator O A is the first link and A B is the second link and the uh, mass is distributed uniformly. So, the length O A is L 1 and length A B is L 2. Uh, let P be any point on O A at a distance of L from the point O. Then the coordinate of the point P is given by this thing, the x coordinate and y coordinate. So, L sin theta is the x coordinate and minus L cos theta is the cos theta 1 is the y coordinate where theta 1 is measured from the vertical line downwards. Then the velocity square of that point P, the modulus of the velocity square is uh, small l square theta 1 dot square directly by finding the uh, modulus square of this vector. So, the kinetic energy of uh, a element of length d l small length d l is taken and so it is given by half into mass is density into the length d l uh, into the velocity square velocity is L square theta 1 dot square at that point. Now, if we integrate from the 0 to the total length L 1 of this uh, kinetic energy of the element, we get the total kinetic energy of the first link. So, uh, we can easily see that the integration d k is given by this expression. Now, we take the second link for the second link the let q be any point on this uh, link a b and it is at a distance small l from the point a. So, the coordinate of the point q is uh, the x coordinate for example, it is it is l 1 sin theta 1 is this length plus the extra length that is L 1 sin theta 1 plus small l sin of theta 1 plus theta 2 the angle theta 1 plus theta 2. So, that is the x coordinate similarly y coordinate is the negative uh, y axis. So, we get minus L 1 cos theta 1 minus small l cos of theta 1 plus theta 2 and velocity is the time derivative of the uh, position vector which is given by this expression and the modulus of the velocity square uh, can be directly calculated by taking the x component square plus y component square. So, the kinetic energy of the small element of length L is half into mass into the velocity square is this one and the total kinetic energy is the integration from 0 to L 2 the length of the second link that is given by uh, this expression after directly integrating and substituting the limits we get. So, the total kinetic energy is 
k 1 plus k 2 the kinetic energy of link 1 plus kinetic energy of link 2 that is given by this by adding the previous two equations. Now, the potential energy uh, for the link 1. So, we take uh, this line L 1 plus L 2 line minus of L 1 plus L 2 uh, that is y. So, this line is the 0 potential energy line and so for the point P the height is given by from this line is L 1 plus L 2 minus the y component that is uh, L small l cos theta 1 is the uh, y component distance. So, uh, L 1 plus L 2 is this minus of this one is giving the height. So, uh, mass is rho into d L gravity and the height of the small element. So, the total potential energy is the integration from 0 to L 1. So, that gives uh, and because mass is the rho into the length is m 1, we get this uh, formulation the total potential energy of link 1. Similarly, the potential energy of the small element at the point q is given by this expression uh, because the uh, height is L 1 plus L 2 minus the y component which is given by this expression. So, the total potential energy is the integration from 0 to L 2 uh, which can be easily calculated to be this. So, uh, the potential energy P is P 1 plus P 2 is given by this and the Lagrangian is calculated as k minus p. So, it is a, a the simple procedure that we differentiate first with respect to theta 1 dot and then we differentiate with respect to time d by dt of this we get this expression and the derivative with respect to theta 2 dot is given by this and derivative with respect to theta 1 and derivative of L with respect to theta 2. So, substituting in the dynamic equation we easily obtain the dynamic equation of the uh, 2 arm robot manipulator uh, with uniform mass distribution. So, this equation can be written as in the matrix form tau 1 tau 2 is with theta 1 double dot theta 2 double dot. So, we get uh, these components we call it as C m 1 1 m 1 2 m 2 1 m 2 2 plus two components C 1 C 2 of theta 1 theta 1 dot theta 2 theta 2 dot plus we get another term that is called the gravity term. So, that is g 1 and g 2 of theta 1 theta 2, where the small g will appear in these terms. So, uh, this is finally written as tau is equal to m q double dot plus c q q dot plus g of q uh, is the general dynamic equation of the robot manipulator where this m matrix is a 2 by 2 matrix called the inertia matrix and uh, centrifugal and Coriolis term and the gravity term are given by this terms. Now, 
you can easily verify that if you substitute L2 the capital L2 equal to 0 and the mass M2 equal to 0 in this we will obtain the uh, the previous lecture we obtain the dynamic equation of a single arm manipulator with uniform mass distribution that can be easily obtained here. Okay. Now, we uh, develop the dynamic equation of two arm manipulator with uniformly distributed mass the same problem uh, using another procedure instead of doing the integration uh, for finding kinetic and potential energy another procedure is to find the kinetic and potential energy at the center of mass of the links. So, if we consider uh, the first link is given by O A this point and this is A B is the second link. The center of mass of the second link is situated at the point D because the mass is uniformly distributed the center of mass is at the center of the points A and B. And similarly, the center of mass of the first link O A is at the center of this thing it is at the point C here. Now, we can calculate the uh, kinetic energy and potential energy of the first and second link in the following way. Uh, so, if we take the D point the center of mass of the second link its uh, coordinate is given by the x coordinate is given by L 1 cos theta 1 plus half times L 2 cos of theta 1 plus theta 2. So, if we take uh, this one if we measure the angle from the x axis here the theta 1 is from the x direction up to the first link theta 2 is the extension of the first link to the second link is theta 2. So, the from the x axis to the second link the angle is theta 1 plus theta 2. So, it is slightly different from the previous example where the theta is measured from the vertical line from the uh, negative uh, y axis we, are, we were measuring the angle theta here we are measuring theta from the x axis theta 1. So, uh, but we will arrive at the similar dynamic equation only irrespective of how we measure the angles with uh, slight modification in the terms. So, here the point x d and y d are given by this expression from here we see that the x coordinate is L 1 cos theta 1 and this is uh, L 1 by L 2 by 2 into sin cos of theta 1 plus theta 2. So, that is what is given in this expression. Similarly, the y component is given by this the derivative in the x direction is the derivative with respect to uh, time d by d t of x d is given by this expression and y d is given and its time derivative is given by the other expression. So, this is actually y y d dot derivative. Now, the velocity of the center of mass velocity square is given by x d square plus y d square derivative. So, directly it can be calculated by squaring and summing these two terms this one. So, the total kinetic energy is kinetic energy of the mass 1 and uh, the length link 1 and kinetic energy of link 2 it is half into. So, here we calculate the kinetic energy of the link 1 as it is a revolute uh, joint. So, now we calculate the 
kinetic energy of the first link using the formula half into inertia into the angular velocity square. So, that is the uh, way of calculating for a revolute joint. So, here the inertia of this one because the point at which the rotation is uh, happening is the point O. Uh, the torque is given at the point O here and the uh, joint is revolving. So, we have to calculate the inertia of this. Uh, it is mass into if you take a small mass of length d L. So, rho into d L is the small mass into the distance square, the distance from the point at which it is revolving, the distance if you are assuming to be L here L square. So, mass into the distance square gives the inertia for the element of mass. So, we have to integrate it from 0 to L 1 the total length. So, that gives rho is a constant L cube by 3 and the distance is 0 to L 1. So, we get rho into L 1 cube by 3 and rho into L 1 is the mass of the first link M 1 and L 1 square by 3. So, we get 1 by 3 M 1 into L 1 square as the inertia of the first link. So, uh, inertia I A we are denoting. So, I A into theta 1 dot square that gives the kinetic energy of the first link. Similarly, the kinetic energy of the second link it consists of two terms one is half into inertia of the center of mass into the angular velocity theta 1 dot plus theta 2 dot whole square because the motion of this center of mass. So, the second link it is revolving about the center of mass while it is moving the center it is moving. So, we can see that when we observe only the second link uh, we can see that it is revolving about the center of mass uh, at various positions. And uh, apart from that it is also moving with a linear velocity. So, there are two types of uh, motion happening to the second link. One is the uh, linear motion. So, it is given by the kinetic energy is given by half into mass into the linear velocity square. The second is happening because the link is rotating with respect to the center of mass. So, the angle angular velocity it is due to the two angles because uh, when the second link is moving theta 1 as well as theta 2 are uh, making uh, different changes at different time. So, theta 1 dot plus theta 2 dot whole square uh, causes the rotation. And the inertia I d the inertia of uh, uh, inertia with respect to the center of mass is calculated by this expression. So, here also it is the same type of calculation we take any arbitrary point from the center of mass. Let us say L is the distance between the center of mass and at any arbitrary point and a small element of uh, length d L is taken. So, uh, similar to this rho into d L into L square the only difference is the distance is uh, 0 to L 2 by 2 because uh, from the center of mass the maximum distance uh, from either side can be uh, L 2 by 2. So, 0 to L 2 by 2 uh, if we 
integrate the quantity rho into d l into l square, we will obtain the value 1 by 12 times mass m 2 into the length square l 2 square. So, this is obtained here and when we substitute this inertia and as well as the linear uh, the kinetic energy due to the linear velocity, we obtain the total kinetic energy to be like this the k 1 plus k 2 is given by this particular expression. Similarly, the potential energy, the potential energy due to the link 1 is given by uh, this expression, the mass into gravity into the length, the height is given by this. So, here uh, the point, the, the line of the 0 potential energy is taken to be the x axis. So, we note that uh, whichever line we take as the 0 potential energy, it is not going to affect the dynamic equation. In the previous example, we have taken the line y is equal to minus L 1 plus L 2, this line. So, this is the x axis and this equation is y equal to minus L 1 plus L 2 as the 0 potential energy line. Instead, we can take any uh, horizontal line as the 0 potential and the result will not affect the dynamic equation here. So, here uh, the height is to be taken from that point. So, the height is if you take any arbitrary uh, length L. So, we calculate from here for the link 1 mass into the gravity into uh, if you take any arbitrary for the first link, if you take any arbitrary point p the height is given by because the length is uh, small l uh, from the origin. So, uh, the mass is rho into d l and gravity multiplied by the height, the height is uh, nothing but small l into sin theta mass in m g h is this, this one is given by. Now, if you integrate this from 0 to the total length, we will get uh, l square by 2 here and when we substitute the limit, we will get uh, l 1 square. So, we will get rho into L 1 square by 2 into sin theta, theta 1. So, now rho into L 1 is uh, will give the mass M 1. So, we get M 1 into L 1 sin theta 1 by 2 is the potential energy for the link 1. Similarly, we can calculate the potential energy for the second link by taking any arbitrary point from the uh, point A and calculating the height from the x axis. So, the uh, Lagrangian is k minus p kinetic minus potential energy and the usual substitution of k and p will give L like this and then the dynamic equation tau 1 is given by d by dt of del L by del theta 1 dot minus del L by del theta 1. And so, directly by calculating these derivatives we get tau 1 as given here and tau 2 is uh, this is nothing but d by d t of del L by del theta 2 dot minus 
del L by del theta 2 ok this expression. So, uh, this gives uh, the dynamic equation of this one and again we can write uh, it in the form of the matrix tau 1 tau 2 as we did in the previous uh, example we get m 1 1 m 1 2 m 2 1 m 2 2 theta 1 double dot theta 2 double dot plus c 1 c 2 the gravity uh, the centrifugal term and g 1 g 2 the gravity terms. So, a general dynamic equation is obtained for the two link manipulator. So, here we note that the previous example we measured the angle from the downward vertical line. So, if we convert, so these two equations will be slightly different because here we are measuring from the x axis and previously we were measuring from the downward y direction. So, uh, if we convert this theta to the previous example, uh, we can easily see that there is a uh, difference of because wherever here we are getting cos of theta 1 and th in the previous one we are requiring this we have to get cos of 90 plus theta 1 is to be substituted for the uh, the previous one. If, if you are converting this cos theta 1 into this particular angle that is nothing but cos of 90 plus theta 1 minus 90 is not it the uh, if we measure from the bottom. Uh, vertical line it is 90 plus theta 1, but we are having theta 1 only. So, 90 plus theta 1 minus 90 is the cos theta 1 in this example. So, that is if we call this 90 plus theta 1 as some other angle phi 1. So, we get cos of phi 1 minus 90 that is nothing but sin, sin of phi 1 we get. So, uh, wherever cos theta 1 appears if we replace it with uh, sin phi 1 we get the previous formula. Similarly, wherever sin theta 1 appears we can uh, replace it with cos phi 1. So, uh, we can observe that in this uh, dynamic equation wherever this theta 1 is appearing because theta 2 is uh, no difference because it is the same type of measurement in both the examples. In these examples uh, we extend the first link and then measure the theta 2 from the extended line to the second link that is the same thing in the previous case also. So, theta 2 is measured in the same manner only theta 1 is measured in a different way. So, we can easily see that uh, wherever theta 1 is appearing in the equation. Uh, for example, here cos theta 1 is appearing. So, this should be replaced by uh, sin of phi 1 which is measured from the lower vertical. Here also cos of theta 1 plus theta 2 we can replace it by sin of phi 1 plus theta 2 and similarly in uh, the say wherever the cos theta 1 and sin theta 1 appears or cos of theta 1 plus theta 2 appears we can just replace it by a suitable uh, angle measured from the lower vertical we get the dynamic equation of the previous example. So, uh, we one can use in uh, one can use the dynamic equation in any particular manner. So, these examples only show how to derive the dynamic equation of a either a single arm manipulator or a two arm manipulator so far.
So, in the first method we have seen how to calculate the kinetic and potential energy using the integration method. We have taken a small element of mass uh, and then calculate the kinetic and potential energy for that element of mass uh, and then integrating throughout that particular link. So, uh, like that we calculate the energies uh, for all the links both the links link 1 and link 2 and then adding the total kinetic and potential energy as shown in the formula. So, this same procedure we will adopt for a general robot manipulator in the uh, next lecture where we will take a small element of mass at uh, each link and then calculating its uh, kinetic and potential energy uh, uh, with respect to the base frame and then uh, dynamic equation is obtained finally in the similar manner as described in the method 1 here. So, that procedure we will see in the next lecture. Thank you.